Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Eric, the Travel Guy. And if you're considering traveling during COVID-19, I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step guide on this video. First of all, I applaud you for even considering taking a vacation. The travel and tourism industry really can use the help, but I certainly understand the fact that you may have concerns. How do you do it? Well, here we go. First, I wanna remind you that this is a very personal decision to you. So I would say start by getting educated. Start with the CDC website as to how to travel safely. Next, check the State Department as well. And then one of the biggest decisions you're gonna have to decide right up front is whether or not this is a DIY vacation or if you are going to enlist the help of a certified travel advisor or travel agent. Now, if you don't have one, you can certainly go to the American Society of Travel Advisors, that's ASTA, that's easy to find online and ask a few questions there. Or it is possible to DIY this vacation. I've got all the hacks for you right here. Next, up front, I would say first thing, write down a list of your concerns. You know, different things are important to different people, but what are your concerns? What are your questions? And then prioritize that list because throughout your research and throughout the booking process, you wanna make sure that you have each and every single one of those concerns addressed. Especially, uh, make sure you check with those you're traveling with. Do they have concerns? Are they different from yours? Okay, in any event, if you're using a travel advisor or if you're doing it yourself, don't be afraid to ask questions of qualified individuals, okay? You need to be assertive, you need to get good answers, and as a matter of fact, as you go through the entire vacation ecosystem, if you don't know what that is, we made an entire video about it. If you go through and speak with someone who provides one of these travel products, airline, hotel, car rental, cruise, whatever it is, and you don't get a satisfactory answer, I would say move on to the next company. This is serious business. We wanna keep you safe and those around you safe, but we still wanna go on vacation. Destination selection is important now more than ever. Is it a beach vacation? Is it a big city vacation? Ski, uh, national park, camping? So you've got lots of options in terms of a destination. And that's really important because when you narrow down that list of possible places you could go, the first thing I would tell you is get educated about that place because Different states, state to state here in the United States, and different countries have entry requirements and exit requirements as it pertains to your COVID test, a negative uh, test, a vaccination. So that being said, one of the best resources, every country, every state, every city has an official tourism bureau. They're called Convention and Visitors Bureaus. Sometimes they're called Destination Marketing Organizations, CVBs or DMOs. Do a Google search, type in the name of the place, plus the letters C as in cat, V as in Victor, uh, B as in boy, and you'll find the official Tourism Bureau. And they all have information, very specific information and updated information about traveling during COVID. Okay. One of the factors that may influence your decision is how you're gonna get there. Is this gonna be an airplane trip? Are you gonna drive there? Are you gonna take a train? Are you gonna take a bus? Are you gonna take a cruise? Of course, most of the cruising community is on hold for the moment. So generally speaking, you're either gonna drive there or you're going to take a plane there. Now, let's start with planes. First thing I would do is take a look at the airfare from where you're flying from and where you're going, of course. I would look at skyscanner.com. I would look at kayak.com. Look for non-stop flights, if at all possible. Also, airlines have different rules about mask wearing, about face shields, about glove wearing. So you want to check with the individual airlines website as well, just to make sure that you can adhere to the guidance that they're putting out. And in some cases, the rules that you must adhere to in order to fly on that airline. If you're flying, next thing I would tell you is book that ticket, but do it with the airline's app. Download their app. That way, you don't have to handle paper tickets. You don't have to deal with a third party. You can do your online check-in 24 hours before departure. Try to avoid checking luggage if possible. You know, just roll with your carry-on if necessary or if at all possible. If you have to check luggage, that's fine too. And 
I would always tell you don't drive to the airport because it's kind of a hassle. In this case, I say if you own a car, get in the car, drive yourself to the airport and just swallow the expense of long-term parking. That way you don't have to expose yourself to a taxi or to an Uber just to get to the airport. Again, trying to minimize your contact with as many people as possible as you get through your travel day. That's also another tip I would tell you, sit at the front of the plane if possible, you know, rows two, rows three, row four, five, six, and board at the very last moment. Do not be late, but board at the last moment because I want you to get on that plane, sit down, I want that door to close, and I want you to go. I don't want a bunch of people walking past you. I don't want you to have to walk past other people, etc. So sit at the front of the plane and board last. The next big decision is whether or not you're going to stay at an Airbnb, a VRBO, or a traditional hotel or motel or resort. One of the first tips I will tell you is I like staying at resorts and hotels because of their standardized cleaning procedures, especially during COVID-19, okay? So the American Hotel and Lodging Association has put out a tremendous amount of guidance and information to hotels, resorts, motels on how to properly sanitize, how to properly clean. Again, staying with a bigger property, you can download that hotel's app or that resort's app. And in most cases, hmm, let me rephrase. And in some cases, you'll find keyless entries to their doors, meaning you can use your phone as a key to access your room. I would avoid elevators, if at all possible. I would look for bungalows. That's a good option. An Airbnb is a good option, but remember, once you get into a private home, then you forego the local expertise that the staff of a hotel or a resort can provide, especially during COVID-19. Now for you seasoned travelers, you know, you know how to do this. Don't forget too, you'll also be handling more things that aren't necessarily disposable, which is fine provided you trust the cleaning protocols of that particular property. That's one of my biggest considerations when it comes to staying at a vacation rental. I love the vacation rental because you don't have to be around other people. And that has everything to do with destination selection too. Remember, you need to look in and find that destination. What's going on there? Are the restaurants open? Is there in-person dining? How about the activities and the attractions? Are they open? Do you want to go to those attractions in that particular place? Again, travel, a very personal decision. You just need to make some of those decisions decisions so that you have the flexibility to go somewhere and have a phenomenal time while you're doing it. That being said, while you're in country or while you're at your particular vacation place, make sure you understand what the local guidance is and what the local regulations are of that particular country, state, even city ordinances in terms of where you need to be wearing masks, uh, social distancing, staying away from other people as much as possible, and make sure that you adhere to those or you can really find yourself in a lot of trouble depending upon how egregious your infraction really is. And let's talk about packing for just a second, especially if you're boarding an airplane. In my carry-on, I always have hand sanitizing wipes. I have Clorox wipes. I carry a backup mask. And in some cases, I even uh, carry a pair of latex gloves in the unlikely event that I feel like, mm, remember those planes are cleaner than they've ever been. That air is being recirculated. This is hospital grade air quality on those airplanes. So again, it depends upon your personal preference, but make sure you understand the guidance. When I sit down at an airplane seat, I always wipe down those touch points, the seat belt, the tray table, the armrest, things that other people may have touched recently. I always wear my mask. A mask will be required on board an airplane unless you are drinking or eating. I try to avoid eating or drinking on an airplane as well. I just get on, do my flight, and get back off again. And I try to minimize my exposure to the airport as well. Remember, you can take an early morning flight or you can take flights where there aren't as many people at an airport. You can find that information by looking it up online. They'll tell you when most people are at that airport. These days, airports aren't as busy as they used to be, but mitigating your exposure to the airport as well. I don't hang out there uh, for any period of time um, 
and I try to avoid it as much as possible. Again, it sounds like a lot of information to take in, but you can just break it off chunk by chunk, little by little, and with a little education, a little bit of planning, you too can have a phenomenal vacation, even during COVID-19. Now, if you've forgotten part of this, maybe you didn't take some notes, that's okay. You can find this video on the special section of my website, it's called COVID-19, very easy to find. That's at ericthetravelguide.com, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well. So, thank you for watching. Happy travels.